Page 51. The Soma Cult. The cult of Soma, called Haoma, H-A-O-M-A, Haoma, in the Western language, was typical of both the Vedic and the Iranian people. It occupies an important place in the Vedic rituals because having drunk Soma, Indra is thought to have performed extraordinary feasts. Para. The identification of the Soma plant has been a subject of long debate. Recent archaeological discoveries show that the earliest evidence of the Soma cult occurs in Turkmenia. The Soma drink was probably prepared on the premises of the temple of Togoluk 21 in Margiana, capital M-A-R, G-I-A-N-A, -A, Margiana, which is identical with the Murghab River, capital M-U-R-G-H-A-B, Murghab River Delta, in southeastern Turkmenia. Here a row of vessels has been discovered on a special brick platform. The Soma drink was poured into these vessels, which were taken by the priests, to the altar where libations were offered. Footnote 49. Small twigs of a plant called ephedra, E-P-H-E-D-R-A, ephedra, appear in the vessels. These twigs have been identified by Harry Falk with Soma. Footnote 50. All these discoveries are ascribed to the overlap of the pre-Andronova and later Namazga V cultures. Footnote 51. Therefore, the Haoma or Soma cult seems to have appeared around 1800 BC. Page 52. Soma clearly appears in the form of Haoma in the Zend Vesta but its cult or the drink of Soma does not appear in the western branch of the Indo-European communities. It is possible that the practice started among the pre-Zoroastra people from whom the Avestan people adopted it. If the identification of Soma with Ephedra is correct, the cult of this drink obviously came to India via Iran. Para Cremation. Cremation is seen as a trait of the pastoral people who did not bury their dead in the earth from which they were removed by the nature of their economy. Footnote 52. It is also held that advances in metallurgy revealed that fire could transform metals into various objects and hence it came to be associated with the body in the hope that the dead could be rejuvenated. 53. Footnote. Whatsoever be its origin, cremation was practiced by the Vedic people along with burial. However, it became more typical of the Vedic Indians and was probably also practiced by the Proto-Iranians. The Harappans and the pre-Vedic people generally buried their dead. Symmetry H within brackets 2000 to 1400 BC in Harappa shows the burial of only a part of the dead body, a practice attributed to newcomers. Recent horizontal excavations in Harappa undertaken by American archaeologists within brackets 1986 to 93 do not indicate cremation so far. Footnote 54. Page 53. The Rig Veda shows that both burial and cremation were customary. Renault finds it difficult to determine whether the cremation, the collection of burnt bones in a vessel, and its burial, and rituals connected with impurity, funeral rites, etc., are Indo European. Footnote 55. Para. Though the Avesta forbids cremation, Geiger capital G E I G E R Geiger conjectures that the 
Dhakma, D A K H M A, Dhakma, within brackets, the place where Parsis disposed of the dead, was originally a place for cremation. Footnote 56. Mills suggests that both burial and cremation may have been permitted in the Gothic per period and adds that at least the original Mazda worship did not recoil from cremation. Footnote 57. Para. In Europe, the earliest cremation graves occur north of Budapest in Hungary and belong to the 49th and 47th century BC. Footnote 58. In the 5th millennium BC, they also occur in Bavaria and Holland. Footnote 59. In Asia, the earliest trace of cremation appears in the northern part of Kazakhstan, in the steppe zone of Central Asia, in the Neolithic phase, probably between the 5th and 3rd millennia BC. Footnote 60. Cremation remains in rectangular urns are also reported from Palestine and placed perhaps at the end of the 4th millennium BC. Footnote 61. Cremation prevailed in South Anatolia around 2500 BC, in the Middle Danube Basin around 2000 BC. Footnote 62. And in the Lower Volga and Southern Urals during the Classic Timber Grave period. Footnote 63. Page 54. Vessels resembling human faces and containing post-cremation remains have been found in the Danube Basin, and some of these belong to the end of the Chalcolithic, C-H-A-L-C-O-L-I-T-H-I-C, phase. Footnote 64. Several post-cremation burials of this basin are attributed to about 1500 B.C., Footnote 65. Cremation obtained in Greece in the time of Homer, 900 BC, within brackets, together with the practice of burial. Footnote 66. References to the burning of the dead occur in the Iliad, capital I L I A D, Iliad, footnote 67, which also mentions the post cremation barrow. Footnote 68. Post-cremation burial was also prevalent in Italy. The pre-Villanova culture. P-R-E hyphen. Capital V-I-L-L-A-N-O-V-A. -L Villanova culture, which covered a major part of Italy in 1100 to 900 B.C., and contributed considerably to the spread of the Indo-European languages, reveals post-cremation burial on a large scale. Footnote 69. In the Hallstatt Cemetery, capital H-A-L-L-S-T-A-T-T, Hallstatt Cemetery, which is probably early Celtic, 455 cremation graves, and 525 inhumations were found. Footnote 70. This shows that cremation prevailed in France around 1000 BC or earlier. Cremation remains appear predominantly in Germany, Poland, Lithuania and Scandinavia and the idea may have been influenced by the Villanova culture spreading via the Hallstatt's culture to Sweden. Footnote 71. Para. In the East, the practice spread in the later half of the second millennium BC in South Tajikistan, which was situated to the north of the Hindu Kush and the Pamir Mountains. More than 300 post-cremation graves of the later Bronze Age, within brackets, 1300 to 900 BC have been found in the cemeteries of Tulkertepe and 
Aruktau. Capital A R U K T A U. Aruktau. Footnote 72. Page 55. The practice appears in the Swat Valley of the Indian subcontinent, which is situated 500 kilometers south of Tajikistan. Human faces appear on urns in Gandhara, and the introduction of this practice is assigned to 1800 BC. Footnote 73. Although the earliest post cremation burials of Tajikistan belong to 1300 BC, the practice may have started in that area much earlier. It was fairly easy to reach Gandhara from South Tajikistan by following the course of the Kabul within brackets Kuba, K-U-B-H-A, Kuba River. Footnote 74. The practice also appears in the Galigai, in the Swat Valley, around 1400 BC. After the end of the Harappan culture in Gumla, in Baluchistan, we have clear evidence of post-cremation burials in which animals were sacrificed and buried along with the cremated human body. Footnote 75. Para. Whether or not cremation prevailed in the Indian subcontinent from pre-Vedic times is debatable. John Marshall holds that it was common in the prosperous phase of the Indus civilization. Footnote 76. At the same time, he states that the evidence regarding the disposal of the dead in Mohenjo-daro is very meager. Footnote 77. He also adds that there is no evidence regarding the disposal of the dead when the Indus civilization was at its peak. Footnote 78. These contradictory statements make it difficult to accept Marshall's view that cremation was common in the mature phase of the Indus civilization. Page 56. Vats, capital V-A-T-S, Vats, indicates that he found 176 post-cremation burials at Harappa. Of these, in 175 cases, nothing apart from the bones of animals has been found. Only one burial pot has some remains of a human tibia which is not burnt. Footnote 79 But from human bones found in the graves of Baluchistan, footnote 80, it is inferred that post-cremation burials also took place in Harappa. It may be noted that instances of post-cremation burials in Baluchistan and in the Chalcolithic phase occur only at those places which show the typical pottery of the Indus culture. Footnote 81. In Sindh or Punjab, post-cremation burial pots appear towards the end of the Indus civilization, which may have been true of Baluchistan because of its proximity to the Indus region. Vats mentions that such burial pots from Harappa belong to the late and middle periods. Footnote 82. According to Marshall, the major portion of evidence regarding the disposal of the dead in Harappa belongs to the latest period of the settlement when the occupation of Mohenjo-daro had probably already come to an end. Footnote 83. Marshall has reproduced the photographs of three burial pots. In his view, two definitely belong to later times and the third probably belongs to the same period. Footnote 84. This implies that all three pots belong to the post-1600 BC period. Para. We thus find that human remains are almost absent in the pot burials. It appears that birds, animals, etc. were burnt and cooked and placed in pots for the dead. Page 57. Since human remains do not occur along with the bird and animal remains, 
post cremation burial in Harappa seems to be doubtful. Even if we accept its prevalence, it clearly did not obtain in the mature Harappan culture, but appears after 1700 BC. Vat states that cemetery H in Harappa belongs to the last phase of the Indus civilization. Footnote 85. Evidence of post cremation burial appears in late Harappan times around 1600 to 1500 BC, perhaps on account of Harappan contacts with the speakers of the Indo Aryan languages. Para. Inadequate ex excavation may explain the paucity of post cremation burials in PGW and late Harappan layers in Punjab, Haryana, and its neighborhood. A limited excavation of Harappan settlement in Rajasthan shows five cases of cremation. Footnote 86. This may have been a late Harappan within brackets 1600 to 1200 BC settlement. Cremation is amply attested to by later Vedic texts within brackets 1000 to 500 BC. <coughs> Though so far it is not supported archaeologically in the upper Gangetic Plains. However, several pits, stupas, and burial mounds found in the middle Gangetic Plains clearly show post cremation burials dating to between 600 and 300 BC. Footnote 87. Para. The early Vedic texts speak of burying the bones after cremation. Footnote 88. Page 58. The Srauta Sutras and the Grijya Sutras provide for the collection of bones and the Shatapata Brahmana, footnote 89, prescribes the burial of bones and erection of a smashana or tumulus on it. Comparisons clearly indicate the similarity in the manner in which the Kurgans was set up in South Russia, South Ukraine, and the Volga area. This practice was followed much earlier than the date of the earliest Vedic texts. Para. Both the Rig Veda and the Atharva Veda show that animals were commonly burnt with the dead bodies of human beings. The funeral rite of the Rig Veda, footnote 90, shows that a goat was burnt along with the dead body. According to the Atharva Veda, footnote 91, a working ox was burnt with the dead person. Homer refers to the killing of sheep cattle, horses, dogs, and men, and the burning of their carcasses with the dead body of a chief. Footnote 92, para. The texts on funeral rites do not prescribe the slaughter of birds and animals in order to provide the dead with food in their graves. However, the Opastamba Dharma Sutra, footnote 93, indicates that the brahmanas must be fed with meat and fish, which will satisfy the pitaras or fathers. Though this text cannot be placed earlier than 500 BC, it contains some relic of the Vedic practice. The Apastamba is reminiscent of the age when people relied to a great extent on animal food. Pastoralism dominated the life and culture of Indo-European communities. People believed that they would need meat even after death. Indications of such a belief are found in India and outside, but the provision made for non-vegetarian food in the Kurgan burials is not found in Vedic funeral rituals. Para. The archaeology of animal sacrifice, including the horse, cremation, fire rituals, and soma cult, leaves little doubt that these had long been in use in Central Asia and parts of Europe, 
before they became common in the Indian subcontinent on account of the advent of the Vedic people. 